Are you in charge of your homeschool, high school schedule? Or is your schedule in charge of you? I've always thought that homeschool scheduling should be an Olympic event. Good afternoon, sports fans, and welcome to the Homeschool Olympics. Today, we have got a really special event for you. We have got high school scheduling. That's right. So let's check in with our competitors down on the field. Let's see. Oh, yes. Okay. In lane one, we have got Sally Drill Sergeant. Looks like Sally's all set up. She's got her team members standing at ease. Uh, got the clipboard and the whistle. That's right. Lane two looks like, yes, we have It's Alice Organized. Alice is ready to go. She's got her baskets of color-coded papers and the whiteboard at the ready. All right, lane three. We have got a newcomer in lane three. It's Debbie Car Schooler. Debbie is ready to go. She's got the team loaded up in the van. Looks like she's also got her area completely organized for optimal efficiency. All right. And I think we're ready to begin. The starter's gun has been fired. Yes, they are off. Let's check in and see how they're doing. All right, in lane one, Sally Drill Sergeant. She has read, she is reading off that schedule on the clipboard, barking off orders. Oh, but looks like her team is standing off to the side with a big scowl, possibly rolling their eyes. Ooh, looks like this could be a rough day because the teen is not enjoying being ordered around every minute of the day. Yes. All right, let's check in in lane two. Oh, yes. Alice organized. She's really got this under control. Alice, yep. She's now bringing the teen to the whiteboard so the teen can add in all of the things that they would like to do today. Yes, I think that teenager has got the schedule completely written up now. Uh, Sally is now, or Sally, excuse me, Alice is now handing out those color-coordinated schedules and bonus points for Alice. She's handing out personalized snack bags to each member of her team. All right, but that means it's time to check in with our newcomer. Let's check in now with Debbie Car Schooler. Okay, Debbie's in the van and it's moving. Uh, her team will be stopping at various stations throughout the stadium as part of her competition. So let's see. Oh, first stop. Teen is out of the van, looks like it. Yep, violin lessons. All right, and Debbie is in the car doing the regular school routine with the other team members. And, oh, back in the van, now moving on to the next station. Oh, looks like it's science class. And the teen is out of the van, and Debbie is reading character building books to the rest of the team members to keep them busy. And yes, oh, teen's back in the van. Off to the next stop, which, Ah, yes, basketball practice. And currently at basketball practice, looks like Debbie is engaging in crafts in the car. What fun is that? Maybe even, yes, there are some balloon animals going on there. What a big time that is. Well, we will be checking back in with our competitors throughout the day because this is a day-long competition. But just remember, no matter who wins the gold medal, they are an inspiration to high school parents homeschooling everywhere. Or they could be hospitalized because of utter exhaustion. Welcome to Homeschool University, where life meets learning. I'm Diana Applegate, and seriously, in an event like that, I would be the one in the hospital. Pretty sure. I don't know, the one with the clipboard and the whistle. That sounds like a lot of fun. But no, seriously. Scheduling is a big part of any homeschool day, especially in the high school years, because let's face it, you've got added stuff coming into the high school years. You're probably juggling way more outside commitments, um, and you're most likely dealing with more rigorous school subjects that take a little longer. At the same time that you've got all of that going on for your high schooler, you probably have younger children that still have all the same needs and all the same time requirements. So. How do you juggle all this? Well, today I'm here to give you some tips on successful scheduling in your homeschool high school that hopefully will change the way you look at your time management. So hey, let's dive right in and get that first tip. So 
So let's talk first about school scheduling, as in how to find time for everything that you know your team needs to do as far as seated schoolwork goes. Well, I got some tips for you here, some really good ones. First one is do your core work in the mornings, and there's a big and written through the middle of that. Wall off your mornings so that your mornings are reserved for core schoolwork time, seated schoolwork time. In other words, don't schedule morning activities. I'm sorry, morning activities in my homeschool was like the kiss of death for the rest of the day. Because if we were out doing something in the morning, uh, by the time we get home and we've had lunch, no one wants to do anything. And with my kids, they're half asleep at that point as far as they're concerned. You know, this is this is just not their prime time, okay? So hold your core work like your math, your social studies, your history, your English, whatever you're doing that's absolute core has to be done, put that stuff into the mornings. So then what about all those elective subjects that your high schooler may be doing? Great, put them in the afternoons, okay? The afternoons are more flexible. Yes, you're gonna have some outside activities going on there. You may have other things, but hey, if you schedule the electives in the afternoons, I look at it this way. Even if all things go south and you cannot get to those electives in the after, that particular afternoon, the world's not going to end. It's not like the core subjects where now we are actually behind. This is an elective subject. We'll figure it out. We'll get caught up. That's how I looked at it. Um, but a couple other tips that are kind of a blanket into this whole subject would be, first, go to a four-day schedule. Seriously. Go to a four-day seated schoolwork schedule. Um, the reason for this, now you have a whole day blocked out for outside activities. And literally, this can be things like doctor's appointments. Uh, this can be things like your homeschooler having uh, an outside job. This could be anything going on. This could, maybe you want to be part of a co-op or you know whatever it is you're doing. Now you've got a day set aside where that happens, okay? Um, another big kind of blanket overall tip for this, consider staggering the elective subjects throughout the week. Um, I actually borrowed this idea from Charlotte Mason because that's how she did um, so certain subjects, not all of them, but certain subjects in her school. She would actually say, okay, on these days we do this, on these days we do this, on, or you know, on the off days if you want to look at it that way. So in other words, um, maybe you're doing a foreign language and an art history study. Uh, and you also want to add in uh, maybe some logic, uh, you know, something along those lines. Okay, great. So you're going to take uh, maybe the language arts and the art history are going to go, I mean the language arts, the foreign language and the art history are going to go in certain days. And in the off days, then you plug in that logic study. However that looks um, in your home school, uh, you know, how you stagger those things around is totally optional, but the idea behind it is that you're not doing every one of those subjects every day. Instead, you're adding in that extra layer of flexibility, right? So to recap, you're going to do core work in the mornings, and the mornings you're going to guard with your life so that they don't get interrupted. You're going to have elective subjects in the afternoons. You're going to go to a four-day schedule to free up one day a week for all those extracurricular things that you have to do outside the house. And you're going to stagger those elective subjects throughout the week so that there is actually time for your teen to get them done. So next, we come to juggling those outside commitments. Since we've talked about what to do with the school time, got that figured out, now we're going to go into those outside commitments. I want to start off this topic by giving you a little maxim that totally applies. The idea is this. Anytime you say yes to something, you say no to something else. This totally applies in this category. Um, every time you say yes to an activity, you are going to say no to doing something else. And the trick is, as parents, you need to evaluate the benefits here. So you need to say, is this activity beneficial enough to then cause us to knock this activity off the schedule? Is that a good value trade-off? That's the point of view that you need to stick with through all of these considerations. So let's talk about some of those outside commitments. Um, how about work? Work is super valuable. You do not want your child to be one of those college graduates 
that's never held a real job, not a good thing. Um, however, work outside the home can be super time consuming. Um, it may be a several day a week commitment. I guess in that situation, I'm going to sit down as a parent and try to say, okay, is my teen going off and doing this job really valuable to them? Or could we hold work activities maybe to the summer months when we're less busy with our schoolwork? Um, there is an exception to this, and that would be entrepreneurial work. If your child is an entrepreneur and has an idea and they're making it work, oh my goodness, let them run with it. And seriously, um, as the thing progresses, as the business snowballs, you may have to put some boundaries on it at that point, but at least in the initial phases, you may want to allot a lot of freedom to that because that's a great thing. If, if your child has ideas like that, whoa, more power to them. That's awesome. But just saying, with work, you want to limit how much time is involved there and definitely decide the value of it. Um, that leads us, though, to volunteering, which is extraordinarily valuable. But again, it can lead to a lot of time out of the house. I highly recommend you hold volunteering to one day a week. And the perfect day for it is that day when you're not doing seated schoolwork, that day five, right? Um, volunteering is a wonderful experience for your teen because, among other things, it gives them a whole new perspective on what's really valuable in life and how important other people are in our day-to-day -day living. So I highly encourage volunteering, but don't let it get run away. Um, another activity that takes you out of the house, sports. Now, the good thing about sports is that it's seasonal for the most part, although my kids were swimmers, which is year round, but we figured out how to make that work. Um, it was every afternoon at the same time. It just became a routine. All the kids were involved in it at the same time. So it just became like a natural extension of our day. But for the most part, because sports does take up a lot of time, especially with the games on the weekends normally and all that stuff, um, consider maybe just at least one sport a year um, maybe if you're going to do more than one, at least make sure that maybe they're separated by a few months in between and not just back to back to give you a chance to um, get back to a more normal schedule. Maybe put some other things in because sports is a real time killer. Just saying. Um, so here's another outside activity you're going to want to consider social stuff. Yes, that is things as simple as your teen wants to go hang out with the friends. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. That's great, but that can get out of control. In fact, that can become such a big thing for your teen. That they're literally racing through everything else they have to do, not doing their best job, not actually caring, because all they're focused on, yeah, when it's this time, I'm going to go hang with my friends. If you limit that time just a little bit, put some boundaries on it, maybe say, okay, uh, this afternoon every week is open. You're welcome to spend that with some homeschool friends, or if they're school friends, you know, people that are kids that are in school, maybe just limit it to some time on the weekends. Okay. I'm just saying social is important, but do not let your teen convince you that that is the only important thing because it's not the only thing of value. Um, last up in this schedule and uh, this uh, talking about scheduling outside commitments would be outside classes. Yes. Outside classes are really valuable. But I'm going to put in some caution in this one, too. I'm going to say, you know what? Just take one class a semester. Just do one class outside the home a semester. That's plenty. That still allows you to be in charge of your, your homeschool instead of letting outside instructors be in charge of your homeschool. Um, if you are doing like maybe kind of a collective school thing where you're meeting one day a week, that's great. But again, you might want to put some boundaries on that, especially for your teen, because now all their time is going to be taken up maybe by doing the coursework that gets assigned there, which means they're not doing the things maybe that you want them to do in your homeschool. So the bottom line on juggling outside commitments with all of these things, work, volunteering, sports, um, social time, classes, is moderation. Moderation 
using a little common sense and remembering that, you know, saying yes means saying no thing. So that then you can determine what value you want to attach to these outside commitments and then schedule them accordingly. So this next category uh, is really a pet peeve of mine because it gets overlooked when we start scheduling out uh, the time that our teen has in the day. And that is making contributions to the home life. That's right. And where does this start? Chores. I can't tell you how many teens I know that do not have any chores. And right behind that, guess what? A teen with no chores and no responsibilities in the home is going to be a rebellious teenager. I can guarantee it, hands down. Because why? That teen doesn't feel necessary. They're not part of the team. They're just kind of stuck at the old ranch, but they're looking on the horizon for how fast can I bolt from this nonsense because I'm not needed here anyway. No kidding. Chores ground your teen. Not to mention they give them some important life skills. I mean, do you want your child to launch into adult life having never cleaned a bathroom or maybe never done a load of laundry? Or how about not being able to cook anything? This does not sound like a good idea. Instead, wrap your family life around your teen. Yes, scheduling in this one is going to be a little more difficult because you've got to do schoolwork, you've got outside outside activities that or cast in stone. They have a time and a, a date and you can't move that. But just don't forget the value of home life. And when you start thinking about those outside activities, start thinking about, okay, if I say yes to whatever this activity is, am I going to say no to my child participating in our home life? If the answer to that is yes, then the other answer to the activity probably needs to be no. You know, um, another aspect of this would be family time, straight up time spent with the family. Um, in our family, we tried to set aside pretty much Sunday afternoons was like, yep, we're all hanging out together. No one's going to go do anything. This is just our family time. That's really valuable because now you are spending time not just working together, you're spending time playing together. How great is that? So this last topic has to do with something that everyone needs and scheduling that in, and that would be some blank space. Seriously, some downtime, some time that's not allocated for other things. Um, everyone needs this. It's very valuable for your teen as well. But I know what you're thinking. At this moment, you're thinking, oh my goodness. First, I have to schedule in schoolwork, and then we've got um, outside activities, and then I've got to make sure there's family time and chores, and how do I schedule in blank space? Ah, the key here is that you actually don't schedule it. Your teen does. Let your teen figure out where the holes are in their day. You know, let them work with that and make sure that they have it. The important thing is that you're having the discussion with them about the fact that they need to have blank space to have downtime. And by the way, I have yet to encounter a teenager that wasn't all for that. Yeah, they instinctively know that they need time. Let's face it, they're still children. They're still growing. They're still maturing. They need some downtime. So that's it for today. I hope this video has given you the confidence to go out there and tame that scheduling monster, even in the high school years. Really, it's all about just keeping your priorities in focus. Um, remember that when you say yes to one thing, you say no to something else. So keep that in mind when you're figuring out, okay, what's really important in my teen's life and in my teen's homeschool journey? So join me here next Wednesday again for Homeschool High School Part 4, which will be Choosing Curriculum. Spoiler alert, this includes product reviews. Yay, my favorite. And check below, by the way, if you haven't watched Parts 1 and 2 yet, uh, there will be links down there for Homeschool High School Part 1 eight myths busted, and also part two, strategies that really work in the high school years. So if you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button 
And don't forget to turn on that pesky little notification bell so that you will know every time I release a new video on Wednesdays. Don't forget to uh, leave me a comment if you have a tip to share or maybe uh, just a question that you'd like answered. Um, please, oh please, share this video because the homeschool journey is way more fun with friends, right? And remember, here at Homeschool University, we have three priorities. The first is to be practical. That's right. Common sense is golden, and hey, it's free. Number two would be to be purposeful. Pray with your children and for them and for your homeschool. And the last one, be positive. You can do this because you, yes, you, homeschool high school mom, are amazing.